Good morning to everyone. It's uh, so good to see Sister uh, uh, Mamie here. Amen. Uh, let's get, let's Amen. get God, God a hand. Also, I want to announce again, uh, directly after church, uh, we'll have a congregational meeting that will probably last for about uh, 15 or 20 minutes. And uh, we want everybody in the congregation to try to stay and we'll talk about a few things, you know, some of our plans and some things that might be uh, on your mind uh, also. And at this particular time, uh, we're going to begin our worship service and Brother uh, Dwayne Clark will be our song leader for this morning. And we pray that God bless you all and we thank God for our visitors uh, on this morning also. At this particular time, we'll begin our worship service. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I'm hoping all morning for the service saying hymn number 38 in the folder. Hymn number 38 in the folder. We'll sing the first and the third standard. We'll sing the first and the third standard. Hymn number 38 in the folder. We have come into this Oh, I'm in the glory land, baby. 
million number Y6. I come to the garden of love Where the blue is still on the roses And the boys I hear falling on my ear The song of God is close Lord, he's 
facing some, some very challenging situations at this time, Lord, but what's going on in Syria and the rest of the world, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will give him much wisdom, much knowledge, and much understanding, Lord. We pray that you will direct his path, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you will give Congress and the Senate, Lord, and all of our representatives, Lord, uh, uh, the, the right kind of mind, Lord, to do the right thing, Lord, to do what pleases you, Lord. In Bible days, before the children of God, before they would go into any conflict, Lord, they would consult you, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we're asking you to direct our leadership at, at this critical time in the world, Lord. And Heavenly Father, bless every family here under the sound of my voice, Lord. Heavenly Father, we all stand in the need of something, Lord. And you know what we need, Lord, even before we ask in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I'm praying and asking you, Lord, to, to bless every home, bless every relationship, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will put a hedge of protection around the children, Lord, as they go to school. Keep them safe and protected, Lord. Be with them, Lord. And in Heavenly Father, we want to please you, Lord. We want to do your will, Lord. And Heavenly Heavenly Father, just help us in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray that all that we do today, Lord, will be well pleasing in your sight, Lord, as we come together to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for Brother James Bale as he come before us this morning, Lord, and breaks the bread of life to us, Lord. We pray that we'll have open and receptive minds, Lord, and that the word of God will sink into our hearts, Lord, that your word will fall on good grounds, Lord. Use them, Lord, uh, in a mighty way, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Lord, and we thank you for this time, and we love you so much, and we thank you for every good and wonderful thing in our lives, and this is our prayer in the name of the strong name of Jesus, amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The scripture reading is recorded in the book of Acts, chapter 9. In verse 31. And it reads <clears throat> Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. It was strengthened and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It grew in numbers, living in the fear of the Lord. Here ends the reading. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Father Bailey, come and give us the bread of life. Amen. We'd like to say, he is coming soon. May be page number 66. 666 in the songbook. Our invitation is coming number 111. Number six, six, six. Invitation number one, eleven.
can believe and they tremble at the presence of God. Amen. And maybe we as children of God, maybe we have gotten tired of the traditional fire and, and brimstone type of sermons. Yeah. And, 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 you know, that was, you know, a lot of times back in many years ago when, you know, preachers would preach those fire and, and brimstone type of sermons. And I even remember those, you know, growing up mm -hmm. as a young man in the body of Christ. And, mm -hmm. you know, those things were kind of fearful when you think mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. thinking about God in that man. And maybe we have, have gone a little too far and, and, and not being able to accept the, the fear and, and reverence we need to have. And maybe it allows us to become a little lazy in our service. Maybe the fear has been taken out of our lives when we think about worshiping and serving God. Amen. You know, even Jesus said something that was interesting as he was talking to the disciples mm -hmm. and as they were going about doing their work, Jesus said some things. He was saying to them, I don't want you all to worry about what those individuals may do to you. Amen. You know, you're going to be persecuted for my name's sake. Yes. And, and Jesus said something that was very interesting in the book of Matthew <laughs> chapter 10. And I'm going to pick up the phone at verse Number 28, Matthew chapter 10, and verse number 28, the Bible says, And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Amen. Now, you know, folks like to tell folks to go to hell. But we don't have a heaven or a hell to put someone in. Right. So if someone says that to you, don't worry about it because they can't put you there. Right. It is only the Father who can put your soul in hell. Come on. He was trying to want them to know that you don't have to worry about things that people are going to do to you. Yeah. The worst thing that someone can do to you is to take your life. Yes. But don't worry about that. Exactly. You don't have to worry about cancer mm -hmm. or anything that can hurt your body. Mm -hmm. But you rather fear him who is able to send you to hell. That's who you need to be afraid of. This is what Jesus Christ yeah. said. It's not what I'm saying. Jesus said you need to fear God. Yeah. Yeah. Because he can put you somewhere that I'm sure you don't want to be. Amen. You remember the, the rich man and, and Lazarus? Amen. That man did not want to be in hell. They said after he died, he lifted up his eyes and when he found himself. Amen. And he said it was so bad that all he wanted was a drop of water. Amen. That someone would dip their finger in water and drop it on his tongue. Amen. I'm thinking now, what can a drop of water doing all that flame that is there. Amen. But we have to fear God Amen. because he's the one who can put us there. Amen. Amen. The Bible defines, if you look in the, the Greek word, actually I'll start with the Hebrew. The Hebrew word for fear, yura, uh, which means fear, terror, awesome, respect, and reverence. All right. The Greek word phobos means Fear, dread, or that which strikes fear. Okay. God should strike some fear in your heart. Yes, you should have a, a healthy fear of God. Yes, and usually we connect the fear of the Lord with the reverence and awe portion of it. But does that quite go far enough right. when we think about God? We want to think about reverencing and showing God respect. But my friends, I don't think that goes quite far enough. Yes. There should be a healthy fear and trembling before God. And I think we should be afraid to offend God. Amen. And I think sometimes that's what happens with us when we get caught up in sin, yes. realizing that we are offending God Amen. himself. Amen. And I thought about Joseph. You remember Joseph when he was in Potiphar's house 
and, and how Potiphar had put him in charge of everything in the house except one thing. Amen. He loved his wife. He couldn't have his wife. He could have everything else except his wife. Amen. And you remember his wife kept chasing after Joseph day after day after day. You're talking about some temptation is that? That's some temptation that is there. You're in this man's house knowing that you're in charge of everything and you have this person who is pursuing you to do wrong. And, and I love Joseph's response. He said something that we have to learn to take a, a page out of his book. He said something that was very interesting. In the book of Genesis, the chapter is 39. And, and I believe it is about verse number 9. Notice something that he, he says there. Genesis chapter 39. Verse, verse number uh, 9. And verse number 9. And the word of God says, There is no one greater in this house than I. Uh -huh. Nor has he kept back anything from me but you. All right, hold it right there. Now, he's trying to explain to this woman again now. He said, now, I'm in charge of everything, but he's kept back you from me. What does he say? Because you are his wife. Yes. How then can I do this great wickedness? About offending God, or is you thinking about yourself? All right. Amen. And this man, Joseph, was a, a good man, and he realized that if I do this sin, he says, I'm going to offend God. Amen. Amen. And that's who he didn't want to offend, was God. Amen. We have to have a healthy respectfulness towards God Almighty. Amen. You know, it, the Hebrew writer says something I'd like to point out this morning. Hebrews chapter 10. And it's talking about the just shall live by faith. All right. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 26, the Bible says, For if we sin willfully, ah. after we have received the knowledge of truth, yes. there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. So he said now that if we sin willfully, uh -huh. that is now you know right from wrong. Yes. And, and, and you continue to live in sin, uh -huh. then how can the blood of Christ cleanse you? There is nothing else that can be done. Uh -huh. Is that you when you're sinning willfully after you have come to the knowledge of truth. Uh -huh. Verse number 27 says, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment uh -huh. and fiery indignation uh -huh. which will devour the adversary. What is he saying here? He's saying then that if you continue to live this way, Amen. you will have some problems with God. Amen. He's reserving something. He said a certain fearful. That word certain means you can take that to the bank. It's going to happen. Amen. He said a certain and what is that word? He says, fearful expectation. Mm -hmm. Drop down to verse number 31. The Bible says what? Hebrews 26, verse number 31. It, it is a fearful thing. Fearful thing, uh-huh. All in the hands of the living God. He said, it's a fearful thing. Amen. To fall into the hands of a living God. Yes, Amen. That is a that is one to me that has always been for me personally mm -hmm. one of the most frightening scriptures mm -hmm. in God's word. Mm -hmm. That I'm going to fall in his hand and I'm thinking, who can save me now? It's too late. Mm -hmm. When you fall into God's hands, mm -hmm. it's too late. Mm -hmm. And you know that you've seen maybe on television and, and you know they have those programs where they're gonna execute someone. Mm -hmm. And you, you notice how the one thing that the, the, the preacher or whomever would say at the end, may God have mercy on your soul. Yes. And let me, let me explain something to you this morning. <laughs> at the judgment, there is no mercy. All right. Your mercy is now. Yeah. You have mercy. God's mercy is being bestowed upon you right now. Yes. This yes. is the time when we need to get things right. Yes. When Jesus comes back to yes. deliver the kingdom unto our Father, yes. it says he's coming back in flaming fire, yes. taking vengeance on 
them that know not God yes. and don't Amen. obey the gospel. Come on. Amen. That's what he said. It's too late, man. There is no more mercy. Yeah. It's over with. So when folks say, you know, may, may God have mercy on it's too late. Right. If you hadn't done what God would have you to do, right. it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You may say, then, brother, why is it important? For us to be able to, to fear God. The proverb writer says in Proverbs chapter 1 and verse number 7. He says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Right. If you want to have knowledge, the beginning of that is to be able to fear God. Yes, sir. Point number 2. Proverbs 8 and verse number 13. Proverbs 8 and number 13. Proverbs 8, 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, uh -huh. pride and arrogance, and the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. He said the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Do you hate evil? You don't have to answer that. He says that we should hate things that we know are evil. And I, as I look around today in, in society, folks don't seem to hate evil. They don't, they don't seem to, you know, it, it's kind of, they have a way of trying to soften things that are wrong. You know, it's not that bad. He's heard someone say, well, it's not too bad. When God either it, it is right, Oh, it's wrong. Amen. And it says that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Amen. Proverbs 10 and verse number 27. Proverbs 10, 27? Yes. It says what? The fear of the Lord prolongs days, mm -hmm. but the years of the wicked will be shortened. The fear of the Lord prolongs days. Amen. By having the right fear of God. Yeah. You know, because sometimes we can do things, we can cause trouble for our own selves. Is that not right? Yeah. We can put ourselves in certain predicaments mm -hmm. that could literally shorten your life. Right. We can do things, you know, just, just think about, for example, the first thing that came to my mind when I think about AIDS. Think about if you are in a relationship that is not a godly relationship, you can catch a disease and shorten your life. If you have a healthy, respectful fear of God, if you free of God, you wouldn't do certain things, just like we read about Joseph. Because he said, I don't want to offend God. You know, at some point in time, you know, our God, he is long-suffering. Is he not? Yes, yes, yes. Hasn't God allowed you to, you know, God has allowed you to get away with things. You don't have to testify to that. You, you, God has allowed you to get away with some things without striking you dead. What if God came at you the way he did with Ananias and Sapphira? Did that not strike fear in those early Christians where folks dropping dead in God's house? Yes, sir. Amen. God could have allowed their things to prolong, but sometimes God has a way of getting our attention. Yes, sir. And no one can do it like God. Amen. When God, when you just you should thank God when he actually gets your attention, yes. that he didn't strike you dead right then and there. Amen. So I thank God when sometimes he has to, you know, I often say like how when some of you may have a son, you know, I see like little fellas in there. You know, sometimes, you know, a little boy, he may be doing something, and you're trying to get his attention, and you, you, you know, the back of the, maybe y'all never been there, but you know, right in the back of the head, you got to get his attention, because you want him to go the right way. And sometimes God has to do that to us sometimes. He wants to get your attention. And without the fear of God in our lives, our lives can be shortened because we don't heed his word. If we don't have a healthy, respectful fear of God, we'll find ourselves sometimes flirting with evil. Right. Or dancing 
with the devil. Amen. You ever dance with the devil? You don't have to answer that. Yeah. Yeah. Riding right, right along with Satan. Yeah. He's riding right there with you. That's your boat. Yeah. At some point in time, Satan's going to want to drive. Yeah. Yeah. Satan's going to want to drive. At some point in time, yeah. he's going to want to drive. He's going to ride along. Yeah. But he's going to have to take over that wheel. Yeah. Yeah. And then I thought about Lot. You remember when, they, when Abraham and Lot, they separated one from another? Yes. You remember how it says that he, that, that Lot, when he decided, when well, he saw all that good stuff over there in Sodom. Now, you know, he knew what was going on. They know what's going on over there. And sometimes, you know, we want to get close to where the, the action is. Yes. You know, we want to we want to see some things. So you know, sometimes we want to get close to the action. Yes. And it says that he pitched his tent toward Sodom. Yes. And we see there were all what befell Sodom. He got captured, you know, over there in Sodom, and Abraham had to go and get it. Yes. Now what happened if he went somewhere else where all that sin and things were just going on there? But sometimes we want to flirt and dance with the devil. Alright. Y'all gotta be careful with that. Because yeah. you, you know what? Yeah. I, I had an individual tell me. He he was he was on drugs. Alright. And, and and I asked him, you know, some things that was going on. He told me he was about 145 pounds. And he said, man, you know I was almost like 250. I said, really? Mm. He said, yeah, he said, I got hooked on those drugs. And he said, I tried every drug there was. Right. And he said, the one that got me was crack. Right. Mm -hmm. He said, that crack got me. And I asked him, I said, why did you try crack? Mm -hmm. He said, because I thought I could handle it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sometimes that's how we are. We think we can handle sin. Yeah. Right? We can play with it. Yeah. Then the Bible says that if a man takes takes cold and put it in his bosom, you, you gonna get burned. Mm -hmm. All right. yeah. But sometimes we want we want to play with sin a little bit because it, you know sin can be fun. Don't tell me sin, but so we have a good time. Come on, it didn't know the sin, the passing pleasures of sin. Don't tell me you want to have a good time when you were sinning. Come on, now. you don't have to testify to that this morning. But don't tell me folks don't have a good time when they talk about sin because we want to dance and play with it. Now realizing that all we're doing is storing up wrath Amen. of God. Amen. That's actually what's happening. And, and the Bible often says that, oh, let, let me get over here to Romans 2. Preacher, let's, let's go to uh, Romans chapter 2. Let me, let me tell you something, something that we do to God. And maybe you don't realize what's actually happening. I'm going to give you an example so it will be clear to you this morning. Uh, Romans Chapter 2, Romans chapter 2. And pick up the phone at verse number 4. Verse number 4? Yeah. The word of God says, Or do you despise the riches of his goodness? Uh huh. Forbearance? Yeah. And long suffering? Uh huh. Not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Hold the phone right there. What are you saying, Paul? He's saying then, sometimes we take advantage of God. Mm -hmm. When we don't repent of our sin, and when God doesn't punish us immediately, Amen. and because the Bible tells me that God is a long-suffering God. Amen. God wants all of us to come to the knowledge of truth and repent. That's what Amen. God wants. Amen. God does not want to destroy you. Amen. He wants to, to save you. Amen. But what happens is, is that we take advantage of God's long suffering Amen. and his kindness. Amen. And, and what he's saying then is that God's long suffering and kindness should actually make us want to do right because God didn't take us out when he should have Amen. or when he could have. Amen. He protected us because he's, he's waiting on you to, to kind of get it together. Amen. I'm giving you some time to get your life right, but don't wait too long. Because at yeah. some point in time, it, it's going to be over. Yeah. And he's saying that sometimes we're, we're despising his, his goodness and his long suffering by taking too long to get things right. Amen. And, and we, we, Amen. Like we take advantage of God. And, and verse number, number five says, But in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, 
You are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day, he says, wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Amen. Basically, you're about to earn a me. For those of you who have, you know, children, and Bessie, you may want to turn this on. <laughs> you know how, <clears throat> you know, you tell that child over and over again to do something, and they don't do it, and, and you, you let them slide a little bit. You know, you, you don't want to knock them out every time they do something, right? But you, you want to give them some time Amen. to get things right, right? right. And, and, but at some point in time, you got to shut it down. What? And the same way God does with us as well, at some point in time, yeah. God's going to shut it down. Yeah. And just like how that child, when they keep doing things, and then mama kind of go off a little bit. Right. And, and then you notice that when mama has to go off on you, you know, who can save you? If there's no more mercy, it's over. Like, you understand what I'm saying? If there's no more mercy, she's going off. And you just trying to block low, you just trying to, you just trying to survive. But what it is is that mama will store up, you store up some wrath. Because she's waiting for you to get it right. She don't want to knock you out. But it's like you push her to that point when you don't get it right. There it is, the righteous judgment. Y'all understand this? They're not making sense this morning. But see, that's how God, because He's so long of suffering with us, He wants us to get it right. He wants you to be afraid. Because He can put something on you that nobody else can. Don't tell me, God can, can put you in some predicaments. You know, He don't have to take your life. But he can, he can humble you. Oh, he, God is very good at humbling you. And, and you know what? That's what I said. Don't worry about what anybody else can do to you. You need to worry about God. That's the one you need to worry about. Don't worry about anybody else. Don't worry about those folks on your job trying to do things against you. You got to please God. That's the one you need to be concerned with this morning. Y'all hear me this morning? You to have fear and trembling before God Almighty Himself. Amen. Amen. What does the ecclesiastical writer say? What is your whole duty? Ecclesiastes 12 and verse number 13. Let us hear the whole conclusion of the matter is to fear God and keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. That's your job. Is to fear God Yes. And to keep his commandments. Amen. Fear God. Respect who God is. All right. He is the creator. Yes, sir. He controls your life. Yes, sir. This life and the life to come. Yes, sir. Don't worry about what anyone else can do. Amen. Yeah. Do you have healthy fear and trembling at the Amen. word of God? Amen. We get that. How do you develop that fear? You get it by hearing. God's word. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Revelations 10 and verse number 17. So faith comes by hearing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And hearing by the word of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, even the children of Israel, as I, as I conclude my lesson this morning, notice something that they said in the children of Israel, Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31. I'm going to begin at verse Number 10. When you're there, say amen. 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 Here's what the Bible says. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, at the appointed time in the year of release, <clears throat> at the Feast of Tabernacle, mm -hmm. when all Israel comes to appear before the Lord your God in the place which he chooses, you shall read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Uh -huh. Gather the people together, men and women and little ones, and the stranger who is within your gates, that they may hear and that they may learn to what? To yeah. fear 
the Lord your God and carefully observe all the words of this law. Yes, and that your children who have not known it may hear it uh -huh. and learn to fear yes, the Lord your God yes, as long as you live in the land which you cross the Jordan to possess. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. That's Amen. how you learn. That's the beginning of your knowledge. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. It's the word of God. Amen. Understanding who God is and to keep his commandments. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Amen. That's your old duty. Amen. To fear God Amen. and keep his commandments. Yes. Amen. There's nothing wrong with talking about God's love, his mercy, and his grace. But we have to balance those things out and not forgetting the other side mm -hmm. of God. Amen. Because he is the righteous judge. He is merciful, yes, and he is kind. Amen. And we can see that today. You can even think about your own life, your own personal experience, mm -hmm. knowing that God is, is long-suffering. Mm -hmm. That he allowed you to escape mm -hmm. certain things maybe that you've done in your life. God has given you a second chance. Yes. Yes. But at some point in time, you're going to have to face him in judgment. Mm -hmm. And it is a fearful thing mm -hmm. to fall into the hands of the living God. Mm -hmm. Walking in the fear of the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. If anyone here this morning is not a part of the body of Christ, Amen. I would urge you to obey God by hearing his word, believing it, Amen. repenting of your past sins, confessing that Jesus is the Christ, yes. the Son of the living God, and being buried in the water of the grave of baptism, yes. being able to rise and walk as that new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yes, sir. Anyone here this morning who is a part of the body of Christ, maybe you are not living the way you should live. Maybe you are caught up mm -hmm. in sin. Yes. Maybe you don't have a healthy, respectful fear of God. Amen. Maybe you're not walking in the fear of the Lord. Yes. I would like you this morning, if anyone is subject to the invitation that you come as we together sing our song of encouragement. Yield not to temptation. Jesus. 